Hi friends, it's Sophia and welcome to Sophia's Turning 50 where we embrace our age no matter what it is, but especially if we're turning 50 in 2022. And speaking of turning 50 in 2022, a lot of my high school classmates are turning 50 this month. And so in their honor, we have a high school themed show today, which explains my ridiculous outfit. Okay, so today we are gonna celebrate the birthdays of several of my classmates. And we'll talk about just a couple of tidbits from high school. And we'll have an extended show and tell so we can go through all of the things that I'm wearing today. So first of all, I did miss a January birthday. Uh, my friend Jeanette turned 50 in January. So happy birthday, Jeanette. Um, Jeanette and Diana and I were really uh, like a little trio in fourth grade, maybe third grade too. <laughs> But if you'll remember from a few episodes back, I read out of my diary uh, that entry where um, Diana said, I hate your guts. And back when we were a trio, um, you never knew when you came to school which two were going to gang up on the third. And there was a lot of that. Um, I don't know why we did that, but we did. And so I'm guessing that that, that day um, that I wrote in my diary was a day when the two of them probably turned against me. I don't know, but that's just my guess. But um, after that, uh, as we got older, Jeanette and I were uh, teammates on our volleyball team. And of course, um, you know, she's a lovely person. Okay, next in February, um, my friend Paul turned 50 and if we go back to fourth grade again, I guess fourth grade was a significant year. That is actually my first memory of Paul. And unfortunately, my memory is that I hated him. <laughs> so um, uh, I don't know why. Again, that's another mystery, but I do remember that very strongly. Um, and of course, we became good friends over the year, part of our extended friend group. And, um, and of course he turned out to be a lovely person as well. So all of this hate that I had in elementary school and middle school definitely dissolved by the time we graduated from high school and we're all still friendly. Okay, next up is Trisha. She's turning 50 this month too. Um, Trisha and I, I remember most, I'm sure I knew her my whole life because we went to Catholic catechism together <laughs> every Sunday. But I mostly remember that we were cheerleaders together in seventh grade. And then also that we got into many inappropriate shenanigans um, in eighth grade and a little bit in ninth grade too. So happy birthday, Trisha. And finally, my one of my BFFs all through high school, Rhonda, is turning 50. So um, Ron, Ron and I got into many shenanigans all through high school. And um, I'm remembering today Rhonda's 16th birthday, which was quite legendary and um, was a lot of fun. Okay, so happy birthday to Jeanette, Paul, Trisha, and Rhonda. I have, there's more birthdays that are coming up later this month, but we'll talk about them in the next few episodes. So for now, again, yay, 50, happy birthday. Next, I just want to read one thing that I got that I found in my um, memory book. I want to read it. It looks like it was a question and answer type of thing, maybe out of Seventeen Magazine or something like that. Okay, so <laughs> I'm going to read it. Question. I like a lot of guys. <laughs> but whenever one starts to like me back, my interest seems to fade fast. I can't stay attracted to one guy for more than a month. What can I do? Well, that gives you a little peek into my mindset um, in high school. Um, I, don't, I don't even want to read this answer because it's lame and it's, it's basically like, think first and, you know, don't get into something unless you really are interested. What I would say is, for some reason, you hate yourself, you're emotionally damaged, you can't stand for somebody to like you because you don't like yourself, so go get some therapy, and until then, stay away from boys. That would have been the appropriate advice back then, but, um, you know, 
kids didn't go to therapy in high school in the 80s and especially not in rural Texas. And so um, anyway, thankfully I outgrew that. Um, I'm celebrating my 20th wedding anniversary in a month. And so, um, but I will say it, I think in large part due to therapy, especially when we, when we'd been dating a couple of years, I was, I started going to therapy and getting a lot of it because I didn't want to do something wackadoodle and mess it up. And I knew what I was like. And so, um, so that all worked out. Now let's start our extended show and tell. First, check out my bow. I wore this to my senior prom and I'm pretty sure that Diana sewed this bow for me. So it was custom made just for me. And so I've kept it all these years. Um, also back, let's see. Oh yes, you know my sweatshirt. Um, and I got all of this out, out <clears throat> because my daughter recently had an 80s day at her school and she wore this sweatshirt. And um, every all of her friends really liked it and they wanted to know where she got it. And you know, she told them it was vintage 80s. So if you've got your 80s clothes, get them out. They're cool vintage. Okay, next is this pin. Okay, I was an office aide when I was a senior. Let's see if we can get that without glare. There we go. Um, office aide. And so I had to wear this when I went around doing whatever I was doing as office aide, mostly roaming the halls, I'm sure. And then um, I also did a second period announcements during my office aid period. So there's my, oh, look, my bow. It's not the one that I'm wearing, that's a white bow, but do you see, I was I was a bit of a bow head. Okay, next, oh, this. This says regional qualifier ready writing. So this was UIL um, and you could get a patch for your Letterman jacket for placing high in UIL academics. So that's cool. Do you know that they, they do not have UIL here in California? which is shocking to me um, and disappointing because I loved UIL. So I was a regional qualifier in 1989. I think, I know what, when I was a junior, I think I got second um, in our, you know, district or whatever you call it. And then when I was a senior, I think I got first place. So in Ready Writing, they gave you a topic and then you just had to write an essay, you know, expounding on it. And um, I remember, I don't know if it was this one, I think it might have been, I used a quote from A Tale of Two Cities, which I used one, you know, a while back, best of times, worst of times to describe the holidays. That's the opening line. But in this one, I remember the line that I used was, um, I think it was the last line of the book or close to the last, last line of the book. Um, it's something like, it's a far better thing I do today than I have ever done before. I do not know what the topic was. I don't know why I would incorporate that sentence, but I definitely, you know, quoted A Tale of Two Cities, and I'm sure that is part of the reason why, you know, I got, made it to regionals. And my last thing is these gloves. I wore these uh, to a prom in 1987. Um, I was too young to be going to the prom. I don't know, again, 80s. So, um, there you go. And I will say that these gloves came in handy because um, when I turned 32, I had a sweet 16 times two birthday party and we all dressed up in 80s. And so I wore these and I went to Goodwill and found some um, acid wash jeans and some lacy tops. I didn't wear this because it was summer in Texas and so I couldn't wear my sweatshirt. And um, we had a bunch of people over and they all dressed 80s. It was very fun. And then I burned a CD with all my favorite 80s songs and that was the party favor that we handed out. So that was really fun. So do you see how beneficial it is to hoard all your things? Okay, and so I know that you're probably like, oh my God, why does she have so much crap still? Well, the reason is I think I figured out is that I pretty much moved out of home with just a few days after I turned 18. First, I went off to my army training, which, you know, we'll talk about some other time, but I was in the army reserves. And then I, from the army reserves, I went straight to college, um, didn't even go back to my house. And then sometime in the fall, I did go to my house and I took everything and just brought it back with me to Austin. 
And so, and then I put it all in a trunk and then I just carried that trunk around with me for the rest of my life. And that's why I have all this stuff. I have elementary school papers and, you know, just all kinds of stuff. And so, um, anyway, I think I kept it all because I was the keeper of my own memories. You know, I couldn't leave it in the attic at my parents' house or something like that. And so, um, I, and I really enjoy them. I go through, you know, every now and then I, we try to clean out the garage and I go through my trunks to see what can I get rid of. And, um, occasionally I'm willing to part with a few things as more time goes by. But as you can tell, um, I keep most of it. Let me know, do you have, uh, any of your mementos? I'm sure you do, but you know, do you have a trunk full? Let me know in the comments. Well, that's all that we have for today. If you liked this video, please hit the like button and leave me a comment and subscribe. I can't promise that I'll ever do something this silly again, but I do try to keep these um, videos lighthearted and fun. So if you subscribe, you'll know um, when I put more videos out. Remember to embrace your age no matter what it is and take some time to embrace your high school self. Have a great week.